We begin in the name of Allah. We thank him for creating us. We thank him for bringing us into existence. We thank him for the blessings of Iman and for the renewal of that blessing in every moment. We praise Allah. We seek his aid in every moment. We ask for his forgiveness and we seek his protection. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone. He has no like. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the man of praise, is his final messenger. And we praise Allah as well for gathering us on this day of Jummah, as we know, is a day of reminder and a day of warning. A reminder of that first gathering on that day, Allah asked us, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? That day when we were brought out from the loins of our forefather Adam alayhi salam. And so we all bore witness. And that bearing witness was the basis of our creation on earth. It was when we took the covenant with Allah that we remain faithful. And it is on Yom Al-Qiyamah when we will be gathered again that we will be asked whether we remain faithful to that first covenant. And so we know that our life in this dunya is defined by these two points in time. We know that through all the trials and tribulations of life, the ups and downs, the uh, ebbs and flows of life, is defined by Yom Al-Qiyamah and Yom Al-Mithaq. As Allah tells us, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ وَلِيَعْلَمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاءُ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ These are the days that we cycle around people. Allah tells us that time in this life is cyclical. In order that Allah uh, may show, uh, uh, may come to know those of you who believe and to take from you martyrs and verily, Allah does not love the wrongdoers and oppressors. And so time in this life is cyclical. There are times when we, are, when we feel at a low, when we are at a loss, when we are in a state of deprivation, and then there are times when we are in a state of expansion and everything seems to be going well and we seem to be on top of the world. There are times when we seem to be rising, there's hope, there's times when we think that things are, are getting better, that we seem to be uh, uh, rising up in life. And there are times when we are in a state of fear, when everything that we have seems to be going wrong and that we seem to be losing everything. We begin life, as we know, at the bottom and we end life at the bottom of the cycle. Allah says that he creates us as clay and then from that clay he creates sperm. And then from that sperm, he creates a lump of flesh. First, it is, it is without shape, and then he shapes us. And that he protects us in the womb until we come into this world. And we come into this world screaming, afraid, completely de dependent in a world that we do not know at all. And we've just, just been ripped from this caring womb, this rahim, this place of mercy that is our mother. And we also end life in that same state completely dependent on our caretakers, unable to walk, unable to feed ourselves, unable to clean ourselves, and forgotten this world, as it seems like the world has gone by and moved on. And there are times in this life that we return to that state, a state of helplessness, a state when the world turns against us. And sometimes it's not us that we see in, in those states, but our loved ones or our community members or our fellow Muslims. Obviously, we know this is the state of our fellow believers in Palestine. May Allah grant them strength and victory and aid. But we also have moments in our lives like this, although to a lesser degree. When we lose our jobs, when we lose our families through divorce or through death, when we think that there was a breakthrough coming in something we were struggling with in life, but all we are met with is disappointment. These are days that Allah promises us. These are some of the days that Allah will circle about us. These days will come. Surely, indeed, have no doubt, we will try you. We will try you with something of fear. Fear that the enemies of Allah, that the enemies of Islam will come and will conquer and take over. Anxiety about what Allah has, store, has in store for us uh, tomorrow. Worry about what will happen with our families. Worry about our loved ones. 
and hunger, or you can say more broadly, he will test us with some a loss of uh, some basic necessity. And a loss of wealth, or a loss of lives, and a loss of blessings. We know that the horrors that are committed against the people in Palestine right now, these are all on our minds. These are in our hearts right now. But as horrific as the scenes and videos that are coming out of Gaza right now, we should not forget to see how the Palestinian people are themselves dealing with the aftermath of this conflict, just as we are saddened and, and horrified by what we are seeing. We should not forget to see the elderly man who, when his son's body was brought to him, upon seeing it, he grabbed him and he cried out, Give our salams to the Prophet We should not forget the woman who said, you know, I know that the Muslims all around the world are praying for us, praying for our difficulty to be removed and lifted. But if you were here with us, you would be overjoyed. We see the skies filled with angels. They're coming and seizing the souls of our martyred ones of our friends and our families. What you see right now in Gaza is a bastion of Iman. Gaza is a proof of Allah's words, They are those when people say to them, the people have gathered against them. So fear them that this only increases their faith. And they say, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. We find enough with Allah, how excellent a one to trust. These are people who are going through the worst of times, but their faith is not something to be doubted. Their children are not leaving this religion. They're not engaging in, in, a, in a number of different uh, degrading things. No, they're increased in faith. Because there are people who recognize the purpose of, of, of trials and tribulations. They know that everything that they're going through, that the prophets themselves went through, their lives were, were also riddled with hardship. But that hardship was to initiate them into a state of humility with their Lord. There is no one who loses their parents without knowing that the Prophet ﷺ also lost his parents. There is no one who loses their children without knowing that the Prophet ﷺ also lost his children. There is no one who is exiled from their homeland, but they know that the Prophet ﷺ was exiled from his home, and that his people turned their back on him. There is no one who cannot find, there is no one who undergoes a struggle in their faith, except that they find the example of Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu an, when he was a slave, that he was laid out in the heat in the midsummer day, and his masters came and placed a massive boulder on his chest, and they asked him, do you accept that, this, this, uh, this idol that we have created? And he said, ahadun ahad. Do you accept Uzzah? And he said, ahadun ahad. Do you reject Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And he said, ah, and he said ahadun ahad. This is the patience of the heart. This is the patience to find stillness, to find calm in Allah, when the world does everything it can to agitate you and to agitate your, your belief. Ahadun ahad. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ashadu nasi bala'an al-anbiya'u thamma al-amthal fal-amthal. The most tried of people are the prophets. The most tried of people are the prophets. And then those who are most like them, and then those who are most like them. What you're witnessing in Gaza, what you're witnessing in Palestine, is a prophetic tribulation. They're being treated as the prophets were treated. And Allah tells, tells us about this. That he will test us. He will test us according to our capacities. He tests us to reveal, are we salih? Not salih in the sense of just being righteous. Salih in Arabic also means, are we suitable? Suitable for what? To be khulafa fil ard, to be divine representatives on this earth. To be divine representatives as the prophets and messengers 
were divine representatives. As the angels asked Allah, will you place therein one who will sow corruption and, and shed blood? The angels were confused. Why? But Allah says, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun, verily I know what you do not know. Yes, there will be men and people who will fail the test, who will bring about ruination, who will bring about corruption and death. But there will also be people when Allah tests them, they will excel in the test. They are the ones who will bring back righteousness onto earth. They will bring back order and life and justice. And it is they who will inherit the earths from the prophets. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتَ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٍ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٍ وَأُولَئِكَ أَهُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ أَقُولُ كُلِّ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah ta'ala, ulillahumma malik al-mulk, tu'tu al-mulk man tasha, wa tansi'u al-mulk min man tasha, wa tu'izzu man tasha, wa tudillu man tasha, biyadika al-khayr, innaka ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah says in his Quran, telling his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, O oh Allah, you are the master of dominion. You give power to whom you will, and you take power from whom you will. You elevate and raise whom you will, and you debase and lower whom you will. In your hand is all good. In your hand is all good, and verily you are most capable of all things. We know that Allah tries us in these different ways, that if the people of Palestine are in a state of loss and deprivation, and that is a state for which Allah asks patience, then we on the other side of the world are in the opposite state. We're in a state of blessing, in a state of opulence, in a state of luxury, and it's for that state that Allah asks, uh, asks gratitude. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٌ Verily, if you are grateful, then surely I will increase you. But if you are ungrateful, then surely my torment is most immense. We know that here in the East Bay we live, and maybe not all of us, but many of us live in a state of extreme wealth. Extreme. We live in perhaps the richest region, the wealthiest region, in the wealthiest country, in the wealthiest time that humanity has ever lived. We live in homes that would be the envy of kings and queens, palaces that would, and comforts that people could not even imagine a few hundred years ago. We live in extreme luxury. But we also live in a world that encourages greed. We live in a, we live in a society that tells us we need to have more and more and more. We're raised to believe in capitalism, not in the sense of being, not in the sense of free trade, but capitalism in the sense of unlimited profit. More and more and more, without any sense of civic duty to give back to our community. We live in a time when we are shown images of people who have more. We're shown false advertisements. We're shown unrealistic standards, impossible standards on Instagram and TikTok and all these social media platforms, and they keep telling us more, more, more. In other words, be ungrateful for what you have. Be ungrateful for, for what you have because it's not enough. You could always have more. And so it's because of this that we, in the state that we're in, that in a state of such blessing, that the blessing is so enormous that Allah's sign, that we should not have any doubt about Allah's signs, though we find that it's in this place, in this time, in this country, in this region, that you find the most doubt about Islam. You find the most doubt amongst the believers. 
He found that he found the most doubt about about God when he asked people. People are asking, "Where is God? God is all around you. You just don't see Him." Well, in kafartum in adabi la shadid. If you are ungrateful, then verily my torment is most intense and most severe. We live in a world that tells us that we that we should work and work and work until we get more and more and more. But sometimes we work so much that we leave our families behind, that we leave our communities behind, that you find people in, the, in this community where they're working but their children are, are leaving the faith or their children are dating or going to parties or going to whatever else and they're not practicing. And you wonder what went wrong. What went wrong was that you chased after the dunya. What went wrong was that there was no investment in the community. Because this is what, tr what true faith means. مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَاهُمِهِمْ وَتَعَاطِفِهِمْ مَثَلُ الْجَسَدِ The believers, remember this, this is the hadith about, about community. The believers, their likeness in their love for one another, in their mercy for one another, in their compassion for, for, for one another are like one body. إِذَا اشْتَكَ مِنْهُ عُذْوٌ تَدَاعَ عَلَيْهِ سَائِرُ الْجَسَدِ بِالسَّحْرِ If one member, if one limb of the body becomes sick, then the rest of the body responds with sleeplessness and fever. We all feel the sleeplessness and fever, the discomfort and the pain for our people in Palestine. But sometimes we have to wonder, what about our neighbors? What about our fellow community members here? Do we know what's going on? with the person next to us? Do we know the troubles that are going on in this, in this community? And is it bothering us? Are we doing something about it? Where is the investment? The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, Beware of greed. Greed destroyed those who came before you. In other words, it destroyed the communities and nations and civilizations that came before you. Why? Because greed, when someone's privileged with many blessings, all they care about is attaining the finer things of life. They seek things at the expense of others, and they do not care about what their community members need. And so the Prophet ends, ends this hadith by saying, and by explaining, It led them to shed their own blood. They will attack one another. They will be envious of one another. They will have infighting amongst each other. They will shed their blood and they will seek access to their, to their maharim, to those sacred things that they have. And so, just like we feel pain and suffering and difficulty with a, uh, uh, for the part of the ummah that is in Palestine, we should feel the pain and suffering for the part of the ummah that is here. Faith begins in communities. Faith begins with care and love and concern and compassion for your fellow believer. Faith begins with helping your neighbor. Faith begins with hosting guests with graciousness. It begins with forgiving one another and for standing for justice when we see wrongs being done to each other. Faith begins with love for Allah and his messenger, not just a conceptual nominal belief in them love for Allah and his messenger and for what he brings, and to practice this, practice this example of the prophetic community until that resolve cannot be, be, be uprooted. That is where the strength of nations comes from. That's where the strength of civilizations come from, when they are strong in heart that they can uh, 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 overcome oppression in the world. Uh, Allah says in his noble scripture, in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا كريتي عينيا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات على حياء منهم والأموات إنك يا مولانا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين
اللهم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلت لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين اللهم اجعل القرآن الربيع خلوبنا ونور سرورنا ورزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وأطراف النهار اللهم احفظ هذه الأمة المحمدية في قدس يا الله اللهم احفظ هذه الأمة, الب... الأمة المحمدية في فلسطين يا الله اللهم احفظ هذه الأمة المحمدية في جميع بلادها إنك على كل شيء قدير وبالإجابة الجدير قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمة أبو بكر وأشدهم في دين الله عمر وأستقم حياة عثمان وقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة وهمسة أسد الله وأسد رسوله خير الكونون كانوا ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفهشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيم الصلاة